four people. One of them is studying for their GED. Another is an IT consultant. One has a son named Larry. And another lobbies for social services in Springfield. The thing all four of them have in common is they've all been homeless in Chicago. You know, it's a challenge to walk downtown in Chicago without seeing someone who's homeless with a plastic cup and a sign that says, help the homeless. What really bothers me about that personally is that I feel these people have accepted this persona as being faith, faceless, nameless people. So what's my response? How am I called to respond to homeless men and women? What's my responsibility? Should I give them a dollar? Should I ask them their name? Should I shake their hand? Or just keep walking? What action should I take and why does it matter? After some reflection, I think the, la the least we can do if you give them a dollar or not is to look them in the eye, ask them their name, and recognize their dignity. As a Catholic, I believe in the life and dignity of the human person. This means that every person is precious, people are more important than things, and the greatest measure of our society is how we treat those who are outside and disadvantaged. And this reminds me of the story of the, parable, uh, the prodigal son. Does anybody remember how that goes? A man is walking on the roads to Jericho. He's robbed and left naked for dead on the road. A few minutes later, a priest walks by, then a Levite. But when a Samaritan man sees him, he stops and binds up the man's wound and takes care of him. The moral of the story is, of course, is that the Samaritan man was the one who treated this person as their neighbor and recognized their dignity. So is this just a story, or am I called to do the same thing? Well, one night in Old Town, I went into the store at the ATM to get 40 bucks, and I made a commitment to myself the week before that to be this kind of good Samaritan, I was going to try to, if somebody asked me money, give them all of the money that I had in my wallet. So when I walked out of the, the store a few minutes later with that $40, a man in a wheelchair came up to me and said, hey, buddy, can you help me out? I need 80 bucks for a room. So I stopped and I took a deep breath, opened my wallet, and gave him the 40 bucks that I'd just taken out of the ATM. And he said, is that all you got? I need 80 bucks. <laughs> so this experience taught me that I wasn't being called to fix this man's situation, but just do something and recognize his dignity. It also taught me that more than doing something, I need to listen and recognize people's stories. So a couple years ago, when I was running the Chicago Marathon, I decided to collect stories of men and women on the street that I met to help promote their cause. Some weeks to follow, I met Larry, Larry Elijah, the proud father of a son who lived with his grandmother. And he was named Larry after his uncle, Larry Elijah. So there was three Larrys in his family. This is Lenny. I met Lenny outside uh, the Miller's Pub. She was helping a woman open the door on the way to the Dunkin' Donuts. And Lenny said, you know, I don't help everybody, but this lady looked like she needs some help. Lenny is studying for a GED and is trying to bump her math score from 370 to 410 so she can get a better paying job. And this is Willie. Willie I met on the corner of Wacker and LaSalle. Willie uh, held several jobs over the last few years. He's worked as a butcher, a mechanic, and an orderly at a nursing home. And surprisingly, he told me that being an orderly at a nursing home was his favorite job of the three which, of course, is the more demeaning of the jobs, we would say. But I appreciated that in that job, he could recognize the dignity in the people he was serving in one of the most vulnerable times in their lives. And I think these people I were talking to was teaching me something. They taught me that each of them were homeless, but they each had a story. They each had hopes and dreams that were no different than my own. Many had families. And each of them had something to give and dignity to share. These experiences have led me to getting involved with a ministry called ISP, where we take men from shelters in the Chicago on weekend retreats to get in touch with their relationship with God or their higher power, however they define that. Why connect with God, do you ask? When I meet someone on the street who's homeless, you know, I can give them a dollar, I can buy them lunch, I can help them find the job, but I can't fix the thing inside them that's broken that brought them down this path in the first place. Only God can do that. So my role is just to be a witness, to be a companion, to be present in their struggle. You know, how many of us are grateful when someone says a kind word or buys us a cup of coffee during the day, right? Everyone. Why can't we do the same for men and women on the street that we meet that are homeless? Well, this has been my journey 
I hope what I've shared with you will help you recognize the dignity of the men and women you meet on the street who are homeless. And I'd like to end with this quote. It says, we cannot do everything, and there's a sense of liberation in this. It enables us to do something and to do it well. Thank you.